briefly going to go through the exact physiology of all of our muscle contractions so you can understand uh, why we implement so much manual resistance into our program and the benefits from that. As we go through our basic physiology, we look at the different types of muscle contractions um, and then I'm going to ask you what your definitions of those are and then we're going to kind of give you an idea of the way that we um, psychologically take a look at that so we get a little better of understanding of again why we program that. Um, what are my three basic muscle contractions? Okay, so if I'm looking at these three, um, give me your basic definition of eccentric. What is it? Letting down. Good. What else? Lengthening. All right, so what would my concentric be? Consequently, my symmetric would be neither or neither, wherever you're from. So it would be, stays the same. All right. Now, for those of you guys that aren't up to speed on that, all they're talking about is muscle length. So if we're going to talk about eccentric, we're talking about the muscle belly actually lengthening. If we're talking about concentric, we're talking about the shortening of it. And we're also talking about isometric would be <coughs> static. It does not move. There is no change. Um, we also need to look at it from a biomechanical standpoint in terms of, uh, just using this weight, of the pet. If I have a basic eccentric, or we'll start off with the easier one, concentric. Uh, the amount of force that's being placed on this joint, so now all of a sudden, the muscle is shortening, which would be my concentric. So now an isometric contraction would be the amount of force that I'm producing is equal to the amount of force that the pen is placing on my joint. But now the problem we run into is this guy, eccentric. So now, if I'm slowly lowering this, there's a huge difference between voluntarily lowering this and involuntarily having the joint lengthened. All right, does that make sense? And there's a huge concept there that we have to understand as strength and conditioning coaches because just by lowering a weight slowly is not the same benefit. Not to say it's not beneficial, but it's not the same exact response in the body as if I was going to sit here and hold this and somebody were to rip my arm down, whether it's under control or whether it's not under control. So make sure that we understand from a true eccentric load, it is the amount of muscular force that I am producing is not enough to overcome the amount of force that's being placed on the joint. So in isometric, I can possibly sit here and hold this, voluntarily control this coming up, shortening it, concentric contraction, but a true eccentric is the amount of force that I am applying on that joint is not enough to overcome the opposite force that's being placed on it. Huge benefit there in terms of the way that we train. Now, to go back, this right here, your isometric contraction. Everything relies on our ability to isometrically contract. We have a quasi-isometric contraction, which means my body in its head, everything that I've done from a feed forward, feed backward standpoint, I know what a squat should look like, I know what it should feel like, I know um, proprioceptively what a squat should, or how a squat should be be performed but there's certain things that happen in this world that don't allow me to do that and thus you get a quasi isometric contraction now what we mean by that oftentimes just go to face that 90 degree elbow flexion there you go so now no change in the length of this we have 90 degrees out of the elbow 90 degrees out of the shoulder everybody agree so that's our standard isometric contraction so if he scratches his nose Hold that. There you go. Now, you good? Yep. Don't let me move that. Now, even if I pull down, 
it's still 90 degrees, I'll push here, 90 degrees, pull in 90, pull in 90. Now, the amount of muscular tension will always stay the same to protect this joint. Well, what it is, it's a system called your compensatory action reflex. If he's gonna um, potentially protect this joint at 90 degrees, now keep this at 90, now slowly and easily I want you to bring this over your head. Keep the joint this way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, from this position, keep it 90, keep this there, there. Do you think there's significantly greater activation in the bicep? Yeah, because why? Because we've elevated shoulder abduction, now all of a sudden we've incorporated the coracobrachialis. But technically it's still at 90 degrees. Now, gentlemen, easy, keep it there, 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 keep it there. Now, even though we're eccentrically loading that coracobrachialis, the joint still stays at 90 degrees. So now you start to understand, thank you very much, the geometric variability of what happens because it is a three dimensional model and it is a holistic viewpoint of the body. So from the outset, I can sit there and say, you know what, there's no change, but no change in the actual angle, but there is a dramatic effect of the amount of musculature and the interplay of different musculature as you're going through trying to maintain a 90 degree angle.